What? Wait just a second, a viewer might be wondering. I thought the handheld video was next. Eh, don't worry. It's not cancelled or anything like that. It's just that the handheld video is going to be a lot bigger than I anticipated. So I thought I'd slip in a bonus review in between Globs of Doom and the handhelds vid. I was going to post this review after the handhelds vid was done, but I didn't really want to make you guys wait that long. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Hope you all enjoy this bonus review. Have you ever had a show you really liked, but you were so disappointed it got cancelled really early? Yeah, that was me with El Tigre. Created by Jorge Gutierrez and his wife Sandra, El Tigre was about a kid named Manny Rivera who had superpowers and is constantly being conflicted whether to be good or evil. This is such a cool concept. We don't really get to see that many shows that really delve into it that much, and the representation at the time was really cool. And for Nickelodeon's first Flash animated series, it looks really good even today. Unfortunately, the show was cancelled early and it only lasted one season, which is a real big shame. Nowadays, if you were to ask people about obscure Nicktoons or Nicktoons that should have lasted longer, usually El Tigre is brought up. But one thing that not a lot of people may not know is that there was a video game El Tigre had. No, I'm not talking about his appearance in the DS version of Toybots or the cameo in MLB. No, an actual video game based off the series. You're real! El Tigre the video game was released in 2007 and it came out for the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo DS. The game was published by THQ, and surprisingly, it was developed by Blue Tongue Entertainment. Yeah, the same people who made the first three Nicktoons games. There were plans for a Wii version of the game, however, because of the show getting cancelled early, the Wii version was scrapped. In fact, because of the show getting cancelled, the game was only worked on for 10 weeks. I repeat, only 10 weeks. That's pretty insane. So we'll just be looking at the PS2 version for today. Maybe later down the road we'll look at the DS version. But yeah, let's begin. Firstly, the game actually includes an episode from the show. That's pretty cool. And back then, El Tigre didn't really have any home media releases. It wasn't until a little bit later on that it would get a DVD release. But still, this is really cool that this game has an episode from the show. The plot is really simple though. Basically, an evil prince named Mikula kidnaps Rodolfo and Grand Poppy. And with the help of Frida and Black Revo, it's up to El Tigre to save his family and stop Mikula. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Honestly, I kind of forgot this game even had a story. It's that simple. What's disappointing is that not only are the cutscenes just a slideshow, but there's no voice acting in this game. That's pretty disappointing considering El Tigre had a really great cast, and I would have loved to hear them revise their roles in this game. Environments look pretty good though. I love that they look very accurate to the actual show, and the background you could even see locations from the actual series. That's pretty good attention to detail I must say. The models look… alright. Not bad, but nothing amazing. But this soundtrack is great though. They literally did not need to go this hard on the soundtrack. Funnily enough, this game was also composed by the same person who did Attack of the Toy Butts and would go on to do the Doom 2016 soundtrack. Yeah, that's a pretty good resume right there. Like, listen to how good this song is. So yeah, presentation-wise, not bad at all. So what's the gameplay like? Basically, it's a 2D platformer and you can switch between two characters depending on the stage. You have three playable characters, El Tigre, Frida, and Black Cuervo. Now while the characters are predetermined in every stage, at least they all get the same amount of time to shine, and all of them play basically the same. In order to progress through the game, you will need to collect a certain amount of macho, which are these coins you find in the stages. I've always had enough macho though. They're very plentiful in the stages, so you shouldn't have any problems not having enough of them. There are only four levels in the entire game, with two bonus stages. That's very small, but the levels are surprisingly challenging. Like, I died a lot in these stages. It was very challenging, but pretty fun honestly. Like, I really enjoyed the platforming in these stages. 
Heck, even the first stage, I really liked what they did with some of the platforms, like the kites for example. The combat though... Yeah, it's kind of bad. I don't think the enemies can even cause damage to you. I never saw the icon change no matter how many hits an enemy did to me. The only time the icon changed was when I fell down a pit. But the combat is so basic and mindless that I constantly forget they're even in the stages. Like literally, you just mash the button and you'll win. That's it. There are also these running sections in certain parts of the level, where you have to run as fast as you can so you could get to the end. I love these. I love the challenge here, and the music in these running sections is amazing. <laughs> There aren't really any bosses in the game. If there is a boss, you just kind of hit a switch or something. Well, there is the final fight with Mikula, and it's okay, I guess. So what are those two bonus levels like? Well, they are these... Whoa. Wait a second. These look familiar. Yeah, these are just the SpongeBob slide levels from ToyBots. So I don't know if you could tell or not, but there's a lot of assets from ToyBots that are reused. The control configuration is the same, the gameplay is the same. Heck, even the second bonus stage is literally just reused from one of Spongebob slide levels. It does make a lot of sense, since both games were by the same people, they both kind of came out around the same time, but that just begs the question, why didn't they have El Tigre in Toybots? If they're already using the same engine for his own game, they might as well included him. Well anyway, these bonus stages are brutal. You thought the Spongebob slide levels were hard? These make those look like they're from Winnie Hut Jr. I enjoy the challenge, but dang, these levels are difficult, especially the second one. I should also stress that you don't need to play these levels to beat the game. They're completely optional. You mainly play them if you want to get more macho for the costumes. I like these costumes, and it's cool that all of them are references to the show. Once you beat the main game, you could unlock White Pantera as a playable character, and you could play as him in any stage you want, which is pretty cool reward I must say for beating the game. One more thing I should mention is the concept art. You can see that there are a lot of ideas that couldn't even make it into the final game. A multiplayer mode, and so much more. Though it's weird that it's unlocked from the start of the game, you don't need to do anything to unlock this. It's there once you load up the game. I think the word that I would describe best with this game is fascinating. It's interesting that there is a game based on El Tigre that not only was developed in 10 weeks, but it also used a lot of assets from Toybots, and just how obscure this game is in general. Like, I couldn't even find a single review for this game, and there isn't even that much information about it online. I enjoyed the game, however it's way too short, and that's what holds it back the most. You can beat the game in about an hour and a half, and after that, the only thing you could really do is maybe collect more macho to get the costumes, but that's kinda it. So if you're a big El Tigre fan and you want to play a really hard 2D platformer, then pick this game up, but try to get it for under $10, anything over, and it's honestly just not worth it. There just isn't a lot of content that would really warrant paying more than $10 for this game. But yeah, that's all the time we have for today. Hope you all have an amazing day, and take care. Bye!